and check out this beauty. It's the Genesis 2 from Chin On, and it's got the motorized stepless infrared autofocusing system. Oh, what a Bobby Dazzler. Look at this. 35 2, all the way right up to 80 millimeters zoom with macro as well. Oh, stunning. Look at that. It's got a filter on the front, actually. And there's our uh, infrared autofocusing system. Oh, that was state of the art on 20th century cameras. Look at that. Thing of beauty. Let's turn this puppy on. See if she fires up. Yes. Oh. No. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the battery. It's charging the flash, is it? No. It's not a happy camper. What's it doing? It's not a happy camper. The battery cover's interesting. You've got to actually get a screwdriver in there to push that thing open. And out pops one of these Duracell 2CR5 lithium batteries. Ah, those were the days when you had to get a, like a, oh, the modern ones, you know, CR123 battery. I think they were for your, uh, for your camera. Jeez. And check out where the memory card goes in this thing. Look at it. Fantastic. Just slot your memory card in there takes you know a whopping 24 shots or or you could get those you know really advanced 36 shot memory cards to go in there oh terrific and state-of-the-art viewfinder and look at this state-of-the-art real-time viewfinder look at that i mean i can't get the focusing sorry the infrared uh, focusing system ain't working unless i power on the damn camera but look at that stunning resolution on it zero latency, and it doesn't require any power. Look, just uses the available light. Brilliant technology. Oh, check it out. State-of-the-art rigid flex technology. Look at that. So we've got some rigid boards connected with the flat flex right on there. Fantastic. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Look at that. Some sort of custom uh, chip on board as well. Terrific to see, and just, ah, flat flex coming out the wazoo. Looks like we've got an NEC chipset down in there. And here's our shutter button. That's a real tactile dome, none of this membrane rubbish. Got a couple of trimmers in there too, no worries. What are they for? LCD contrast, I'm assuming. And by the way, just be careful with the uh, camera flash uh, stuff. The flash, the main uh, capacitor is going to be charged up in there. I discharged it with a bang. It was lovely. So it should be right now, I hope. And if you're wondering how the uh, viewfinder works, well, this is not an SLR. None of that SLR rubbish. Single lens reflex. No sorry, Bob. This one is a ZLR, a zoom lens reflex. So yes, uh, just like an SLR, the, what you see through the viewfinder is actually through the lens. Hence why it doesn't actually come out on the front here. And there'd, there'd be a mirror in there. There we go. And uh, that you actually see, what you see is what you get. Wizzy wig. We've got more trimmers on the side here, four of them, and there's our uh, state-of-the-art infrared focusing system. Ah, <laughs> brilliant. I always wondered, I never looked into how the infrared focusing system actually uh, worked, though. I might have to do some research on that. Maybe I can experiment, but yeah, I don't think it's going to come out as one module. About the only thing I know about the technique is that it uh, uses some sort of, you know, triangulation uh, type thing. Although I believe there are other methods uh, used as well. But yeah, that's one of the main ones. Some, some form of triangulation using the infrared uh, emitter, of course, and the infrared receiver. Ta-da! There's our flash cap. <gasps> no touchy. So what we'll do is just uh, discharge that, put it on the uh, low Z range of your meter here, and that puts a low impedance directly uh, across the input. And uh, it'll tell us the voltage as well. These uh, flash caps typically charge up to, uh, you know, 300 something volts like that. Um, so they've got a lot of energy in these puppies. So let's, let's probe, shall we? And... Uh, as I said, I shorted the thing out before just to uh, get rid of the charge, and I like it when they go bang. So it's got bugger all, so it's now safe. And check out the wiper contacts on what looks like our focus ring here. And all these, they've got four wipers in there, and you can see there's different contact patterns, so it would know exactly where it is in the uh, focus range. 
And our focus ring has another set of uh, contacts on the bottom here, so we can spin that around. But as you can see, not much decoding, not nearly as much decoding as they've got on the uh, top one here. Check out that little wiper contact there, that's a nice touch. It knows when the memory card door is open. Brilliant! And in case you're wondering where's the sensor, where's Wally? Well, back in the uh, 20th century, you replace the sensor each and every time. So yeah, guaranteed new sensor. Worked a treat. Now the amazing thing about the build of these things is that like they're actually difficult to get apart because everything's like soldered in place finally. Like you can't get that board out. For example, the contacts are sold in there. You can't get this board out because the flat flex uh, that folds that comes from part of this board over there, it's got the rigid uh, back on it, is soldered directly to the board down the bottom and everything's like... Yeah, soldered in place, so meh, not easy to service, but brilliant envelope design. Look at that. I mean, that's just fantastic engineering. It really is. And we have ourselves a date code, by the way, 1989. Awesome. Good year, that. And made in Japan. As I said, all the best stuff's made in Japan. And check it out. Double-sided load as well. Thank you very much. And there's the contacts for the Zoom. Look at that, so it knows the zoom position as well. And if we have a look at our cogs, there's our date again, 89 by the way. I think this motor here is our shutter motor because it like goes down into the into the bowels right down there. So that's, uh, yeah, I reckon that's got to be the shutter. By the way, this thing was capable of continuous shooting, I think. Where was it? It's on the side of the case here somewhere. <laughs> It says it, but had a button for it. Yeah, continuous shoot mode. That was uh, one, there we go, single shot or continuous. A whopping one frame per second. <laughs> Brilliant. And all the other cogs in here, uh, driven by motor, which is down in there by the looks of it. Um, that's for all the uh, transport mechanism for our analog memory card. And there's a neat little implementation of a uh, contact board. Look at that. They've got a rotary wiper there. And there is the sensor pad, which just uh, screws down in there. Great stuff. And this thing might have uh, felt a bit plasticky from the uh, outside, but nice big metal chassis inside there to hold the uh, lens mechanism on and to keep in place the uh, shutter as well. So very nice. And something fancy pantsy happening under that shield there. Anyway, I reckon what this board, this looks like the uh, infrared auto focusing system. It's tied into the uh, the focus motor there by the looks of it. And, you know, it's close to the infrared sensor. These tiny little wires coming up on here. Um, they look like they might have come from the sensor, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I think they did. Um, but, yeah. I'm actually having a hard time getting this thing apart. It's, it's just, wow, I really built like a brick dunny. And take off a couple of screws on the side. Looks like our orange ring might pop off. There we go. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Aha, here's our infrared focusing system. Check this out. We've got this lever bar here that moves this, oh, sorry, I have my finger on it, moves this, uh, a sensor here up and down like that so th this would be the I assume this would be the emitter and uh, this would be the receiver and it's able to move the receiver up and down so this must be one of the uh, triangulation based uh, systems because you can change the angle of uh, reflection here by changing the angle of your sensor like that it doesn't have to change it much and due to the distances it doesn't have to change it by much so there's only a small travel required there but there you go, that is an infrared focusing system. And that might be like a purely, you know, like an analog type thing. Um, I'm, you know, I don't think there's any digital processing going on in there. I think it's just like analog servo type control to uh, get the focus right. Neat. And you'll notice how they've glued these in place here on various uh, points. They would have aligned, I reckon they would have aligned those. There we go align those at the uh, factory. So, yep, you know, really starting to get medieval on its ass now. The, uh, looks like this front lens is just taped on. Ta-da! And that pops out. There we go, that's our front lens element. 
And there's the rest of it. I think it's like, you know, eight lenses, eight uh, lenses or something like that in, you know, a couple of groups. But, ooh, there's our front lens. Ooh, I might keep that. That might be useful. Hmm. Let's have a look. Ta-da. There we go. Got a bit of a fish eye happening. Like I said before, everything is like assembled afterwards. There's this big heat steak which goes down in there. I chopped that out and uh, that, was all, that was holding this back part of the case on. That was holding the two halves together. Really amazing. And the battery contacts down in here, they were uh, put down and soldered directly into the board like that after it was put in. It's really, it's really quite remarkable how all this goes together. Wow. And there's our photo flash inverter board for those photo flash aficionados. I know you're out there. Come out of the closet. And that's a Rubicon quality brand. And there we go. 330 volts, 180 mic. And finally, ta-da! The two pieces come apart. There we go. Beautiful. We still can't see down inside the uh, main lens mechanism though. And check it out. There we go. We're in like Flynn. There you can see. The uh, the focus uh, center point in there, but you know, what you're looking at is actually right up the top there through that prism back into the uh, front because that's just a mirror in there, hence the name um, Zoom Lens Reflex. So that's what we're looking at. So it basically just, as you know, um, this mirror just pops up. You can see the mirror there at 45 degrees. It just pops up like that. So the natural position is 45 degrees like that and of course that reflects the light through the lens off that mirror up there through that, uh, is that a uh, little prism thing? And then out here through the viewfinder like this. So what you see in the viewfinder is what you get. I don't know if this is 100% coverage. Uh, what that means is that uh, exactly what you see through the viewfinder, exactly the field of view is what you'll get on your actual uh, image itself. So I'm not sure if it was 100%, but you know, this was a half decent bridging camera between a compact, um, you know, one of the uh, compact ones of the day and an SLR. So maybe it would have been reasonably close to 100% coverage. Anyway, that mirror then, when you want to take a photo, boom, flips up like that. And the image just goes straight through, wham, out here to the sensor in the back. And here we go. We can have some fun with this. Let's just hook this up the battery and see what we get, shall we? We've got our motor here. This drives uh, the cogs in here and that maybe will open our lens. Have I got the right orientation? Have I got the right polarity? Only one way to find out. Yay, look at that. And of course you do it again. It won't go, we have to go the other direction. Boom! Flip back. Fantastic. Just for kicks, let's try that one more time because it's so much fun. Hello! Smile! And there's the zoom part of the lens right there. It doesn't look to be anything uh, complicated. Very ordinary actually. I don't see, I mean, there might be a couple of lenses in there, but uh, yeah, it's not some sort of really complicated uh, arrangement where they go in and out at different uh, lengths and things like that. So fairly simplistic. But we do have ourselves a little solenoid in there. Look at that on the back. And there should be able to see that tiny little, look at that. There you go, tiny little contact, which... Wow, makes contact with the exposed part of the pad over here and then this point and then this uh, point here. That's really like, wow, geez, they've gone to a lot of effort. Imagine designing all this. I mean, this is, you know, it's 1989, so it would have been designed in like, you know, like early to mid, early to late 80s. And wow, you know, you've got to figure all this out without, you know, the complex 3D CAD and stuff that we have these days, we just take for granted, but, oh, man. I'm afraid there is nothing else exciting to see inside there, really, because that's pretty much it. And it's a dog to, there's all these screws around here, but bug it if I can get them out, I'm 
turning them, but <laughs> nothing's happening. Nope. Oh, that's it. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was our... That was our iris. Oh, you saw it. But I can't finish this off without showing you the iris, so here we go. Ta-da! Look at that. That's a... That's a rather unusual one. What is that, like, four-blade? Is it? I've, I've never seen one shaped like that, but then again, I'm not a, a uh, real camera aficionado, so... But that's... Wow. <laughs> That's an unusual shape. So that is quite a fascinating insight into, uh, you know, you might think, okay, it's just a film camera. It just opens the shutter and, you know, goes through the lens onto the film. But as you can see, there's tons of advanced stuff that goes on here. The infrared autofocusing mechanism. There's actually a fair bit of, you know, electronics and everything else, all the flat flex and the whole works. And it's actually got lots of uh, advanced uh, capabilities, metering and, you know, all sorts of uh, whiz-bang SLR type, you know, advanced camera type functionality. So, you know, it really is amazing. And just the way that they construct these things and get them into the form factor that they do. 3D envelope design like this, it's one of the things I really love about engineering is trying to fit stuff into, you know, spaces like that. So I hope you can appreciate how much, you know, effort goes into, you know, designing these back in the mid uh, 80s, you know, all these flat flexes, all this, you know, all this mechanical stuff all has to be designed. How many separate parts, cogs, chassis, you know, and uh, lenses and brackets and, all sorts of stuff has to be designed. You know, hundreds and hundreds of individual items you know, have to be designed. I'd love to know how many, uh, how big the design team was, how many people actually worked on something like this and across what disciplines too. All I've got to do now is uh, figure out how to get it back together. Hmm. Hmm. So there you go. I hope you liked the seeing inside this old school uh, chin-on camera, the Genesis 2, or what's left of it. Hmm. Sorry, Fran, but yeah, it's in the name of science. It's okay. Science and education. And so thank you very much, Fran, for sending this one in. It was awesome. So if you haven't seen any of Fran's videos and you're not subscribed, what the hell are you doing? I'll link it in down below. She's got lots of awesome videos. Check it out. Thanks, Fran. Catch you next time.